Thanks, Shen, uh, for the introduction, and thanks for coming and uh, uh, joining this session. So setting the stage, I'll just spend a couple of minutes uh, giving some background about the company, the Mobivail I work for. Primary focus is going to be NVMe SSD controller subsystem solution. I'll go more uh, into the features which are described or defined in NVMe specification and how those features create a challenge for IP provider like Mobivail to create a solution which is reusable, that's why we call it IP, but at the same time have flexibility so that we can address multiple requirements coming from the market. So that's what we will be going into uh, the con I configurable IP components which Mobivail has created to offer the full NVM solution and then I'll take questions. About the Mobivail, it's, uh, it's a startup uh, about a year and a half old. The people who come and uh, from the leadership viewpoint are the ones who created GDA technologies which was acquired and so uh, the GDA created a lot of IPs and we, we are continuing with those IPs headquartered in Milpitas and we have design centers in India, a couple of locations, Chennai and Bangalore. And in terms of what uh, advantages we offer, we are uh, having very configurable cores, that's uh, the big big thing that they are, they are reusable components but with flexible architecture so that we can use uh, at multiple varying requirements. We always participate, NVM is one of the things uh, where we contribute and have access to the specification so that when accesses are getting developed, we are also uh, looking at uh, providing an implementation where an ASIC can, can use them. Support, it's a dedicated support because we are focusing on uh, providing IP instead of any other thing like EDA tool or anything. We are standalone IP and support provider. And today's technology, it's, it's very important to have third party IP partnerships because as you go on high speed interconnect, there is digital controller, there is a PHY, then there is going to be a VIP and everybody has its own hooks. And if you don't have a working solution, it's the end customer, our end customer who is designing, say for example, SSD, who will end up spending a lot of time. So you need to have the right partnership so that those challenges are addressed. And again, we do a lot of certification for, for these IPs. They are standards. We go and participate and get the solution certified that it is interoperable, it is compliant. So let's get into the SSD controllers of system. I think Alex started with a block diagram of an ASIC uh, where uh, he showed that there is an ASIC and that's what we are talking about. So this is a standard uh, one can define uh, uh, for an NVM based SSD controller solution. Basically you have a PCI Express interface. So you will need a PCI Express digital controller, NVM controller which can deal with NVM protocol. Flash controller handling multiple channels or multiple flash controllers. I, I think Matt talked about uh, dealing with 128 devices, how you deal with it. And then of course there, there will be DDR3, DDR4 controller uh, and the reason why there would be is there are certain other non-volatile technologies which are coming up which may not be requiring an on-fee or the flash interface. They may still be supporting DDR type of interface so you can have, you can address those non-volatile technologies and also you can use this as your cache because you have flash and if you are uh, trying to address some value add you can actually use the a uh, lot of times write into cache in instead of writing into the flash so for for those purposes you would like to have a ddr uh, controller as well in the mix and then cpu because cpu you, you are dealing with the um, a lot of commands, carpet collection we talked about. So th that's how uh, you can define a very uh, top level block diagram. And uh, I have picked uh, AXI as an interconnect because this is a pretty usable interconnect. It has pipelining, it has out of order execution. So this is what actually is needed for, for the enterprise and, and the client even SSD requirements because you don't want to throttle. You want to have as much thread parallelism available as possible. And APB is also a standard interconnect for the control path. So that's, that's the architecture I picked up as a standard solution and now I'll get into the NVM itself. Uh, you might already be aware it's a standard which, which is defined so that any, any device which is NVM compliant can, can work with a single driver running on a host because it defines very well the register level interface. That's what the interface host driver is going to use and if the hardware on the target side is compliant, any device can work. So this is very good. You don't need to actually worry about uh, which uh, operating system you are working on, which uh, platform you are working on, if they have a standard NVM solution. The way it works is it defines a pair of uh, submission and completion IO queues, and the target device is a DMA device. And if you have the submission and completion IO queues, you can actually manage the data between host and your memory subsystem. And uh, it's, it's, it's a very well defined 64K IO queues and each of the IO queues can have 64K commands. So you can think about having those many parallel threads possible. You can just think of how much you can actually utilize given, given these, I think, pretty flexible feature. 
And there are a lot of features which are defined there, end-to-end -end data protection, enhanced data reporting, virtualization, a QoS. There is multi-path I.O. and namespacing sharing capabilities which are getting added already in 1.1. Reservations are there and then of course it supports multiple namespaces. So these are good in terms of defining features so that you can address futuristic SSD implementations. But that comes as a challenge for companies like MobiVail to uh, now address those, those configurability which are built into the spec. How you address that configurability and say that I have an NVM solution and I have addressed the, those varying requirements. This, this is what talks about the features which are defined in the specification. We looked at uh, the number of IOQs and depths. It's up to 64K, but how you make, how you can claim that I can support up to 64K, how does that correspond to the actual implementation? There is LB and metadata size. If you are claiming that you are supporting from 512 byte all the, all the way to 8K or even more, uh, basically how are you going to have a solution which can work across all these? A number of flash channels, whether code is going to be supporting reservations, multiple <laughs> multi-path IO, even for the command arbitration for QoS, you can have your own arbitration mechanism. Now, uh, as a core provider, how do we say that you can have your own QoS implementation using our controller? So these, these are the challenges which uh, companies like us have to face while trying to provide an NVMe compliant controller. And then of course comes the challenge which are, uh, which are true for any IP because there is, there is always going to be challenge in terms of what target technology this IP is going to be used in. And so basically what that kind of translates to is what clock frequencies this, this should be able to address. How to do the hardware and software partitioning. Um, I talked about it that you need higher power processor because you want to do multiple threads. But it's still, uh, there is certain functionality which gets into hardware which we are providing and certain functionality which really want software to take care because hardware doesn't have that much knowledge. So how do you do the partitioning as to what will be done by hardware, what you want to hand, uh, hand, off, hand it over to the software? That's a, that's a challenge. And buffering for enterprise class, you want to have buffering at the same time, every stage of the data path needs to be protected. So it's whether all the memories are ECC uh, protected, even within the SSD controller, uh, every data path is basically having some sort, of, some sort of a byte parity. So all those are the challenges and you want to make sure that you have flexibility in the core where if a customer wants ECC protection, you can address it. If a customer doesn't want, he doesn't have to pay the overhead just because your core has ECC built in. So that flexibility has to be there in the core. And, and the number of DMA engines, this is NVMe implementations, because the DMA is basically you are acting as a DMA device. You are moving data now from your memory system to the host. And you really want to have parallelism, you really want to hide all the latencies or the bottlenecks which you have on the memory subsystem. So whether you want to have your DMA engine work on descriptors, which are again uh, linked lists, so that it's basically, it acts as though you are moving data across all the times. And all the work you are doing in software is always happening in the background. So that again poses huge challenge as to how you define a DMA engine which can address that as well as it can address a low performance requirement where they don't have to pay huge overhead in terms of gate count. So those are the challenges. For any NVMe controller, those challenges have to be addressed. Basically, you have to address all the features. You have to look at, if you are going to be addressing it, what is the design time, implementation time, verification effort. You have to implement uh, what time effort needs to be now done by our customers who are actually going to be implementing SSD controller. You have to address area frequency, latency, bandwidth, as well as QoS requirements. So these, these are the challenges. And we have addressed that providing NVMe solution by, by creating these configurable IP components. So NVMe controller itself, uh, we offer that as a standard digital controller block. We call it a Unix uh, universal uh, NVMe controller. That's a block diagram. And as you can see, all the functionality which is defined in the specification is, is in, in this block. Uh, it, it very cleanly ha uh, has the interfaces to the other blocks. Uh, the PCI subsystem is AXI. The memory subsystem is AXI. The blocks you see in the red are the major blocks which have sort of configurability. How many queues, what is the depth of the queue, how many DMA engines you want to support, the data buffer itself, what could be the size. So these are built in into the core as, as a feature so that we can cater to various customers who have varying requirement in the market. 
I think it is compliant with 1.1 specification and supports all the features which are uh, defined in 1.1 uh, spec today. We also need uh, the PC Express controller. This, uh, this is another IP which we offer. Uh, this is uh, a Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3 compliant IP. Uh, market for a long time, a lot of products are there. So this is a silicon proven IP uh, and it also provides an AXI interface because if you remember in the uh, block diagram, I had all the components having AXI so that you can build SOC pretty quick. So this provides AXI interface, AMBA on the top, and this is also available for us to stitch together and create SSD solution. Then we also looked at the DDR3 controller. This is also needed. So we also have a DDR3 4 controller. Again, it has the ECC. It also has the AXI so that again it can plug into the into the SOC to create a full NVMe solution. Some of the features for the DDR3. I think the the, the mo most most important thing is that this is a silicon proven IP and it has AXI so that we can seamlessly integrate into any SSD controller solution. The major part is the flash because you are dealing with the flash and we also have the integrated flash controller again it comes with the axi interface it it has some of the other flash interfaces in addition to nand so again we can trade off if uh, someone is implementing not uh, which is not a nand based we can also have the nor and all so again this this ip is available uh, for us as well as for our customers to actually create the full NVMe solution. Given that, this, this is what we have actually created. This is the MobiWale solution which we are actually demoing in uh, one of the exhibits. Implemented on an FPGA, again, this is the flexibility as far as all the IPs you see in the uh, yellow, that these IPs can be targeted to any technologies and we have ported it to uh, an FPGA today. We have used our PC Express controller, NVM controller, 1.1 compliant, uh, Flash, and the DDR3. And we are using the soft processor core in FPGA for uh, all the NVMe command handling today. So this solution is available and uh, we could just create this solution very quick because we already have uh, these pre-verified silicon proven components and we could actually create, there is an ecosystem available today to really validate that because NVMe host drivers, if you are familiar, are available on Windows as well as Linux. So you have those drivers, you have the platform. If you have a solution, you can actually basically see if uh, this is an NVMe compliant solution or not. If you have any questions. Excellent. Yeah. We have time for one or two questions. So I have a small question. So this what? Oh, you are talking about the target technology, the NVM. Yeah. So as I said, the all the components you saw, these uh, these are the the, uh, the yellow ones. These are all soft IPs. They can be ported to any technology. I just want to know in your implementation, what's the partition between the software and hardware for your NVMe controller? Yes. So. From the very top, uh, the way we have partitioned it is for anything which comes in the data path. For example, when you are actually moving data from your memory subsystem to the host or vice versa, that is dealt by uh, the DM engine, if you see here, the DM engine. So you really want to have a DM engine which understands NVM protocol because there are various uh, mechanisms. There is a PRP where all the pages are aligned on a PRP boundary, page boundary. And there's a new, newer version dot one supports SGL, which is a scattered gather. So this DMA engine should know. This has to be part of the NVM E controller, Unix where you know where in your memory side the, all the data is lying and where in the host side you have to write data into. So the actual read-write when it happens, that has to be dealt by the DMA engine. Whereas once you receive a read, for example, where that read actually goes, whether it goes to your cache or whether it goes to the flash, that decision has to be done in the software. So that's how we do. So the command which can be handled locally, it's in the control path, we do it ourselves. For example, creation of the queues, identify controller, all those commands which can be handled in hardware, we do it. But decisions which need higher layer, the software to decide, for example, LBA to physical address mapping, and logical address to the physical address mapping, we do not know. The hardware Unix doesn't know. But that is something we will pass it on to the software. Software will know where exactly the data is. And the DMA engine is very efficient. Like, as I said, you come and describe where exactly is the data, and you are done. Because the DMA engine exactly will fill out a scatter gather or PRP, whichever mechanism is used in a system. So that, that's the beauty that you, can, you have to have a DMA engine which can handle data path as efficiently as possible. And you have to have a mechanism where you can do back-to-back. -back. So that's why the descriptor-based DMA engine is also very important. Thank you. OK. All right. Thanks. Let's thank our speaker again.